So the next one is called Hedge Doge. Uh, and this comes from Jonathan uh, or uh, Tigeba on, on Discord. So uh, this is also a, uh, a, a DEX based strategy. Um, and uh, I think he, he's, uh, it's, this is kind of like, I think Jonathan will explain, but I think this is kind of based on the, 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 the new uh, kind of like the, the meme coin trend that's, uh, that, that's, uh, that's quite hot right now. Hi, I'm Jonathan and I'm with cohort 11. And so I'm uh, here today to talk to you about my strategy, which is called Hedge Doge. The goal of Hedge Doge is uh, it's designed to participate in sort of early price discovery of tokens on the Solana network. And that's a really fancy way of saying meme coins. Uh, I looked at a bunch of the other strategies that we had, and we didn't really have any strategies from any of the other cohorts that captured this. So I thought this would be interesting. Um, I shamelessly stole this slide from Mike. So I'm sure that I hope he's smiling now and not frowning, but um, the token uh, liquidity maturation curve is something that he has talked about uh, in a bunch of our sessions. They start out, these meme coins or the new coins, the tokens start out on private um, bonding curve networks, right? And then if, if, they, if they're successful, if they get enough liquidity, uh, enough trading, they, they graduate to this AMM. And there's a bunch of different DEXs that provide these, but we're gonna be focusing on Radium for this particular example. And then if they continue, they they might make it to a CLM or CLMM or CLAM. And then eventually they'll make it up to sort of a CLOB, um, a, a normal order book exchange if they make it big. So what we're looking at is we're focusing on the intersection of this bonding curve and the graduation of tokens to a radium pool or an AMM pool. And really the key for this strategy or the hypothesis of the strategy is that there's not a good way to hedge these tokens but what we can do is we can use part of the value um, or the fees that are generated through depositing liquidity in a, in a in the same liquidity pool that the tokens are, are stored in we can use that or those fees as a hedge against sort of like a price decline in in sort of the base asset. So basically the, the hedge doge strategy works like this. Um, we start out with just soul and we're going to immediately swap for a token. And then we're going to take that token and based on what we're calling a YOLO factor, where kind of zero is no hedging at all and one is 100% hedge, we're gonna take part of that token and we're going to um, deposit that in an AMM liquidity pool and then at that point, so if you look here at our logic graph, we're up to here, we've, we've completed the swap, we've completed the, the liquidity deposit, we're gonna sit here, we're going to listen for uh, some sort of signals. Now the signals could be, scroll down here, you know, the signals could be uh, a volume uh, in the liquidity pool, they could be trades, they could be liquidity over time or the pool, or they could be price. And based on that, then we will move to a liquidate phase when it feels right for the strategy, and we'll remove that liquidity from the liquidity pool and then we'll go ahead and sell off um, the token that we acquired back here in the swap phase, and we'll end up at the complete phase, hopefully with more soul than we started. Okay, it's time for a demo. To start with, we have a custom generator, and we're going to use this to generate the configuration for our hedge doge. Um, we're going to pass it just a token. Uh, in this case, we're going to use the Farcoin token. It's going to reach out to a bunch of services. It's going to grab the correct radium amm pool so that we can deposit our liquidity it's going to start and stop the gateway and while it does that it's going to make sure that the gateway has the proper token information uh, for the token that we're swapping here in this case we're talking about these coins are brand new so you're always going to have to refresh the gateway make sure that everything is ready to go um, you can see that we've you can see the information that we've generated we have our pool address we have the amount of usdc that we're going to use which is just 50 cents we've got our yolo factor of 0.5 this means that we'll keep half of the token that we swap for and then we'll use the other half to deposit that as a hedge into our amm liquidity pool now we're going to go ahead and start up the strategy
And we have a little bit of a countdown at the beginning. That way we can sort of double check since we're kind of pulling these strategies live from the world. We're going to make sure that they're good. Um, the first thing this is going to do, it's going to go swap for some of this token since we don't have anything at all. And let's see, it should start here in just a second. All right, it's doing the swap. After it's done swapping, it should immediately try to deposit some of that into uh, the AMM and give us an AMM position. So it looks like it's working on that. And it looks like we're just about done. It looks like it's complete. It should show up here in just a second. All right, and we've got our AMM position. Awesome. Um, that, honestly, that, 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 that was really impressive. Uh, I, I, I was, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm amazing. I should, it looks like, uh, yeah, Jonathan actually kind of worked with Gateway on a standalone basis. Uh, and you know, kind of like really customize the, the, the and kind of like you know, did did a lot of stuff that honestly I, I blows me away. So, so yeah, thanks a lot for for yeah, you know, dealing with all the gateway issues that arose. Um, and uh, yeah, it was just want to give you the opportunity to answer any questions uh, like like uh, that people have about your strategy. Sure thing. Uh, actually, maybe one question from my side is: I guess, how do you? Um, I guess, like, do you think that this strategy uh, uh, is like is is worthy of like kind of future exploration, or how do you? Or do you, do you plan, basically do you plan on kind of deploying it um, like you know live with your for real, or is it more like an experiment? Well, there's a couple of things. Um, you'll notice that I chose. You know, I shouted out to Waffles there with the with the far coin. Mm -hmm. um, I didn't choose like an absolutely brand new coin. I think that's really where, what kind of I was looking at for this, but it was actually, it's very tricky right now. Um, and I, I was having some difficulty integrating the signals there because the new coins are just really wild, right? And so it's like, there's so much noise there. It's a little bit difficult to, yes. um, to handle those right now. I was having just like crazy fluctuations and just instantly triggering liquidations all the time. So... I have to do some tuning there and also you notice that like it took a while for that the position to show up because i was i was trying to sort of make some trade-offs between some of the custom um i didn't actually make a full-blown executor but i made something kind of close to that uh that was based on sort of the um uh some of like the order feed examples to to pull in that day because i was trying to balance uh, running that versus how much i'm like sort of nailing the rpc so there's mm -hmm. a couple of things there um, so I don't know. I'm really interested in the deck strategies. Uh, you know, I'm also very interested in the, the concentrated liquidity pool stuff. So I think there's, I, I think it's, I think there's possibilities there, but it's, um, I didn't yeah. get to work on any of the sort of upfront, um, discovery, which is super important, mm -hmm. but there's, there's a lot of opportunities, I think, um, for those tokens, like, especially, once we get the um the launch pad stuff integrated i because i think there's a lot of opportunities to do that like right when the, like right as it's going from the launch pad to yeah. um you know to the amms and then and i i think that the, the concentrated liquidity is probably like a completely <clears throat> separate type of strategy but um yeah yeah yeah, yeah I, I hear in that um a couple of things i i think i think um i think the, the meteora lp army guys do a really good job of like uh, trying to like do that pull discovery, doing that token discovery stuff. Um, yes. Because, uh, yeah, I, 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 I've been, I've been meaning to kind of like sit in and help, like, like be, be a guest speaker on one of those, like, um, on one of their, their with their like YouTube sessions. But I think they really go into like which coins to, to play and which ones not. And I feel like you can probably draw some like automated, you know, um, tr like indicators for from that from their discussion. Um, and then, and then the second thing is, I think, yeah, I, I totally agree. The launch pads are are like, you know, is the place to go. So uh, I, I'm actually really impressed with what Radium did with Launch Lab because yeah. they're basically taking that like a developer focused approach. You know, so they have like an SDK and other things. They're basically trying to get other platforms to like in, integrate their launch pad into it. And so I think Bonk's the first one. Um, and so I'm excited because now we 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 didn't have that for Pump before, and so now right. I think we can finally have a schema 
that we can develop toward. Um, so I'm actually going to try to add that um, in in 2.6. So so yeah, don't hold me to it. But I think the next release of, of Gateway will actually have that that launch that Radium Launchpad Launch Lab um, integrated. Yeah. Uh, one question to Jiva. Um, how do you think that would be the best way to find these coins? You know, so the if you go down to my um if you scroll down there, Mike, to my like signals section, um I, I don't know, like I, I spent a lot of time looking and th there's definitely a couple of, of signals that you want to watch for, I guess. There's there's the amount of liquidity that's locked in a particular pool. Like for this strategy to work, um, the coin doesn't necessarily have to always go up theoretically, right? The idea is that we're hedging with the the liquidity mm -hmm. pool, but um, it I don't think it's going to work. There's you know there's so many of them that just die. So you don't want to go in with too low of a liquidity. Uh, you don't want to go in with with coins that have too few token holders. So you know you want to start to see some traction. Uh, there's always the risk that there's always the risk that someone is going to basically rug the coin. So that's why you want to keep a close eye on the total liquidity and the liquidity pools. And that was one of the signals that was actually it's that's not present somewhere. Like there's there's no like um, I couldn't find a feed that would give you liquidity over time right like in five like in five 15 30 minute intervals and so that was something that i was working on doing because i can get the i can get yeah. like the current liquidity and so that's something to keep that you'll need to keep an eye on to know that it's time to pull the plug so i think that the signals are going to be things like the total liquidity um the number of holders and mm -hmm price and a couple other things but it's it's i don't know that's really hard to guess mm. yeah, yeah. Uh, I, I was going to ask you if you check i i did a comment there maybe you try to use it but did you check the Geekle terminal uh, data that is available yeah yeah i'm actually um if you saw like in the in the demo there's some gecko terminal data in there um i was keeping yeah. track of the lp or of the I was working on the the profitability and the you know the PL stuff. And so I have um I had some of the gecko terminal info like already piped in uh, okay. to, the, to the program, but I just I just didn't get a chance to get all the signals integrated. And it was mostly because I had tested on more stable, you know, for developing it, I had to test on something more stable, right? I couldn't just <laughs> I, so I was so I was using I was using less volatile coins, but then when I started actually trying it out with my, I made that generator because I needed a way to quickly, you know, basically in a few seconds, get it up and running with the new coin, get get the gateway set up so that it could accept and it had the proper parameters for the coins and things like that. And so when I started doing that, I noticed that the signals were going kind of nuts. So I had to kind of, I had to, I need to rework that part a bit, but it I, I am pulling in quite a bit of Gecko Terminal info already. Okay, hmm. nice, nice. Uh, 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 the, I think that based on what you say, that is the number of the amount of liquidity, number of holders, and all that stuff. You mm -hmm. can you can easily use a uh, Gecko Terminal to provide that data. Yes, yes. The thing is that <laughs> yeah, this is like you don't really know. Uh, because it's like it's a third party data, but we can trust sure. Gecko Terminal. <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah, I mean, you know, that's that was like one of the the major challenge I would say generally for the the deck stuff versus the the club stuff is just that a lot of the data that you would normally have is is a lot of the like really useful market data and signals that you have are not quite there for this type of this type of uh, trading currently. So you have to get it from a third party, whereas mm -hmm. That would be fright. A lot of that information would be first party information. So yeah, well, nice. But I think that there is something there. At some point, I was really hyped with the meme coin trading, all that stuff. Uh, but when I get started, uh, then the crash happened. <laughs> <laughs> but um, I think that there is that. Uh, that's a uh, uh, really cool one thing that I would like to share to to you guys because uh, a, a lot of you are working on, on DEX strategies. 
And I think that's a very good uh, source for market data in case that you are interested uh, is going to be OKX, uh, DEX API. Uh, can I share screen quickly, Mike? Yep. I actually have an integration uh, and, a, and a private repo with this uh, by integrating this. Can you see my screen now? Okay, so this is like OKX wallet. The thing is that you need to trust or at, uh, at some point you need to use OKX. And probably if you are doing DEX trading, you just want to use your wallet. But this product uh, is really cool because this is um, offering candles, a bunch of stuff that is quite handy. Uh, to understand and, and design your your strategy, right? This data should be much more powerful than 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 Geekot Terminal because in Geekot Terminal, my I don't know if you check my wrapper, but I have a wrapper very simple of Geekot Terminal, but uh, they have a bunch of restrictions in terms of uh, rate limits. And this is OKX, it's like an, a, a sex. So the API should be fairly simple to to use. In case that you're interested, I have a repo that is private, but I can share, uh, this one is not private, but I can share it to you guys. That is uh, this one. Mm -hmm. This is a repo that I, I was trying to create a, a thing with a friend that is called meme decks, but uh, meme was the coin that blow up. I have a bunch of meme, but yeah, uh, another story. Uh, here I have the connector of OKX Dex API. So, in case that you are interested, uh, in the market data, the wallet, all that stuff, uh, then I can I can share it to you. Uh, just ping on Discord and I give you access to to this repo. But my point is that we can easily do a, a candles feed uh, using the um, the WebSocket uh, information and, and just provide a candles feed of Dex by using OKX Dex API. So uh, this is the the one that the thing that I want to share. That's really cool. Yeah, and it's very reliable. Actually, the interesting thing is that they have a, an endpoint to broadcast the transaction through OKX. Uh, the bad thing is that you rely on them, right? But yeah, is that like uh, th what they built is like an aggregator. That is something that for me was really cool because you can trade on any chain with just the same interface. But they built an aggregator, so when the the process of in there in my repo is implemented the process of trading and everything but the the logic is the following is like you query the swap endpoint the swap endpoint returns you a message uh, with the best route so you get that message you sign it and then you broadcast it through their uh, endpoint or you can send it through their chain to their uh, smart contract so it's like they have a smart contract on all uh, on each chain and you send it uh, there. The thing is that you will never know because they are giving to you what's the best combination and they are managing those uh, swaps, right? That's uh, so it's like you always want to be decentralized when you're trading on, on the blockchain. But as a data source, I think that might be really interesting because if they provide you the data as a sex, uh, can be can be really cool, I think. Yeah, it, it wasn't bad, actually. I, I, I think we tested it, and it was like, it was kind of similar to using Gateway. But I think Gateway was like, this gives you more control over like the fee settings and all that kind of stuff. But I, I do think, yeah, saying, you can also kind of build, build a transaction and just like send it using like that, that OKX uh, API. Um, but uh, yeah, overall, I, I see sometimes, I, I do think that data sources is something that we can like, you know, improve uh, in, in, in coming about like, I don't know, like, integrating more multiple data sources or somehow like, you know, and using them in the rate oracle or, you know, in those kinds of yeah. things. I think, uh, yeah, I, I think, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm sure, I think we have a lot to get to, but definitely something that we can improve in the future.